the eAssist Dental Solutions Podcast. We are the nation's leader in outsourced dental billing. Our clients require highly skilled dental office managers that can consult with client offices. The sounds you are about to hear are the interviews and real sounds of Summit 2018 Conference in Salt Lake City, Utah. Please share this episode with doctors and dental teams you care about. We hope you enjoy this show, and we hope that you can join eAssist Nation. Welcome to the eAssist Dental Solutions Podcast. I am your host, Andre Quintana, and I'm so happy to be with you today because we have a special show for you. We are at Summit 2018, and we're in Salt Lake City, Utah, the beautiful mountains around me. I had never seen anything like this before. I just want to remind everybody that we are eAssist Dental Solutions, and we are Inc. 500 fastest growing companies list for the second year in a row and this weekend we are learning about the e-assist way and today i have a special guest her name is francis and francis is going to just come on because i'm meeting everybody today uh, for the first time and she's going to tell us a little bit about herself francis how are you today i'm great how are you andre good i am so happy to to uh, be with you here we by chance got to sit together right at the same table absolutely Tell me about your position with eAssist, a little bit about yourself, and what do you love about working with this company? Okay, so um, I am an AM currently on two offices. I've just been with the company since May 15th, and I'm from Texas. I'm loving this, you know, being brand new to it. I wasn't sure if I wanted to be able to come to Summit, if I was going to have the money to do it, but I said, you know what? Everybody is so giving and loving on the Slack channel and so supportive that it's got to be even better at Summit. And so far, I mean, it's been a morning of it and last night, and I love it. It's great. It's great. The people are so, so awesome, so sweet. You walk up to strangers, but you don't even know you're strangers because you're getting hugs from all these people. I totally agree. So one question that Dr. Anderson always likes to ask uh, our e-assisters out there for e-assist nation, how has e-assist changed your life? It's made it where I can stay home. You know, I kind of wish I'd have been able to do this when my son was younger, but now I'm able to stay home, not get out of my pajamas, you know, just, just do what I love to do as far as the dental office goes, but in the comfort of my own home. Great. Well, look. I am not going to keep you because I think we're just going to lunch, right? Mm-hmm. Are you hungry? I'm hungry. Oh, well. I also want to make sure that you go and connect with other e-assisters out there because that is what it's all about. Absolutely. Francis, thank you so much for coming on the show. And I can't wait to let you know when this episode is aired live. I know. I'm so excited. I'm going to share it with all my friends. Terrific. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. So we are back to the eAssist Dental Solutions podcast. And this is a special weekend. As I told you earlier, today we have a very special guest. We have Jonathan. He's from the New England area and he is right next to me here and gracious enough to join us right before lunch. Jonathan, how are you today? I'm doing well. How are you? I am doing great. Well, we are learning a lot this weekend about uh, where we want to head as a company, as an organization, uh, as leaders. We are trying to build um, from the ground up for everybody in any role that you're in to be a leader and to have that example. And I understand that you have a little bit of knowledge when it comes to leadership and something that you are very passionate about, which is the Toyota way. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you can help us with that? Yeah, sure. You know, I was invited here to uh, just participate and just listen, so I'm, I'm very happy to be here this weekend. From a professional background, I've been studying and uh, practicing um, the Toyota production system now for 15 years professionally, and then uh, before that, I was kind of just a consumer from an academic standpoint. Part of my professional career uh, has also been working at Toyota, so I was very well inundated with um, how Toyota uh, operates and how they work. Uh, and from a leadership perspective, the one thing that um, that we focused on, uh, so I did all onboarding training at a little uh, engine casting plant. 
in Jackson, Tennessee. So we were making aluminum engine blocks. Uh, and the first thing that we would tell um, every single brand new employee was mm-hmm. that they are all leaders in the organization. That's correct. And how we would um, give them this example, because oftentimes when I would say, you're all a leader in the organization, mm-hmm. I'll get a lot of... Um, quizzical looks and a lot of um, people who didn't quite understand that because they didn't have the title of supervisor or manager or or leader. Uh, And so really what we would tell them is you are all leaders of different sizes and different pieces of the organization. And some of you might be a leader of yourself Mm -hmm. in the team. Some of you might be leaders of teams and of departments. Uh, But everybody within Toyota is taught to be uh, a leader within their own um, small piece of the organization. That's excellent. Well, you have heard a lot of presentations this morning here. Uh, I'm sure you were inspired as well by some of the uh, speakers, right? Yeah. Knowing what we have talked about uh, this morning, how do you think that the Toyota way and your philosophy can help a company like eAssist? Yeah, I think the one thing that um, that is quite unique with eAssist is uh, you have a lot of very highly skilled people um, who are doing tasks that are necessary. Um, and because of the kind of work relationship with uh, people in geographically dis- disparate locations, it makes it hard to uh, kind of learn from each other and, and uh, share and spread best practices. So within the Toyota Way, um, there's a thing called the Toyota House. And on the base of the Toyota House is standardized work. And that was, you know, spoken of um, quite a bit this morning um, by Dr. Anderson. But standardized work really is about uh, making sure a process or a task is standardized. And that way you can learn and you can improve and you create a baseline uh, for improvement to happen. And so within eAssist, I think this is a... Um, a uh, strong focus moving forward. And I think uh, from my perspective uh, with some work at Toyota and plus other uh, work that I've done, standardized work really is that main basis for continuing to drive uh, improvements, continuing to drive the uh, good work that's being done by all of the folks at eAssist and continuing to drive uh, business growth. And one of the most amazing things about it all is that we're encouraged to do this all in a very entrepreneurial way. Isn't that pretty amazing? Yeah, and with eAssist, you have kind of these individual entrepreneurs. And in a large organization like Toyota, and with the thought behind we're all leaders of our own smaller pieces of the organization, it's trying to make those uh, same entrepreneurial connections Mm -hmm. to say, how can you... Um, follow your standard, but then figure out what's the next best thing to, mm. to do and how you can make it better for yourself, for your customers, um, and for other members of your team. That was powerful. I mean, if we had no other interviews today, this would make a great podcast. So I, <laughs> I, I really appreciate it so much that you came by and said hello. Thank you so much. Well, great. Thanks for inviting me. So we are back again at the eAssist Dental Solutions podcast. I have a very special guest, someone that has joined our team for the 2018 year. Dr. Mark is with me today, and we got the privilege to get him right before lunch. So, Dr. Mark, how are you today? I'm great. Thanks for having me. Sure. We were just so pleased to hear all these presentations. We were actually inspired this morning by some of the speakers. Oh, uh, absolutely. Weren't you so? What a great summit. What a great opportunity to come and learn and be fueled and inspired. And one of the things is that we're all able to come here together from different regions of the country. And get together and have this powerful meeting, but the leadership is where everything is. And you know a little bit about leadership because you are passionate about the Toyota way, which is a real lifeline when it comes to leadership, isn't it? No, it's definitely a a way of seeing the world through a different set of lenses, through lenses of what are the people actually doing on the line that are doing the bulk of the work rather than through the lenses of what am I doing? And uh, certainly as you shift from all about me to all about others, 
there's a, uh, a whole different paradigm shift that occurs. And it uh, is better for you and it's better for them and better for the company and most importantly, better for the clients. So it's, it's just a very, it's a, it's a magical, uh, magical way of really serving others and serving most importantly the clients. Great. And you know how everything works in a dental office, of course, but we're doing something a little bit differently, uh, which is dental billing. And we have all of these amazing skills, uh, people that can really be rock stars in any dental office. How do you think that the, the way that we run ESS, which is encouraging entrepreneurship, by the way, but at the same time, you have to have a team concept How do you think that this all applies, everything that you teach? Well, what I've seen is that all of us have been to some sort of training, whether it be a dentist going to dental school to learn how to practice his or her craft, or whether it be a hygienist going to hygiene school, or whether it be a dental assistant getting professional training to be a dental assistant. But none of us have really ever been taught how to work as a team, how to work as a group, how to be a part of an office. And um, that's certainly perhaps most applicable in the dental billing arena. There is no professional school to go be trained to be a dental biller. There is no special training on how do I do that collectively as a team to do the best for the doctors that I'm working for and also make life easier for the insurance. So it's just been a wonderful opportunity for the Toyota production system to come in and to be able to apply that and it teaches, we don't know the answers. Let's go look and let's go observe what's going on and see are there ways to improve it. And then through continuous improvement, make a system and improve that system and then obviously make life better for everybody involved. And especially in a company where there are so many different ways to do a task, we are learning how to make all these wonderful things that we do for doctor's offices, but under one system. Correct. I I think the genius behind the Toyota production system is simply they were able to create arguably the most reliable automobile on the planet. And they were able to do that at the beginning and and still to this day uh, using untrained laborers, meaning they would go into the rice fields and go and get people that had no experience making automobiles and bring them in and nurture them and support them and help them so that these untrained laborers became experts in automobile manufacturing and were making the most reliable automobile on the planet. And I think we see that so often in our dental profession. We come in and we are looking at people that are undertrained or not trained at all. For example, as a dentist, I have zero training in manufacturing. And yet owning a dental office is owning a manufacturing plant. And so if, uh, if you can train a rice worker or a rice farmer to make the most reliable automobile on the planet, then perhaps there's hopes for me as a dentist to learn how to run a dental office and actually do that in a uh, very productive fashion. And there's definitely a great uh, opportunity for e-assist to do dental billing without mistakes and do it in a caring fashion and being respectful of both patients and the doctor owner and his or her staff. Doctor, thank you so much for your time and expertise. I really appreciate that you came by and said hello. This has been a wonderful piece uh, to this episode and I can't wait to make it live so that I can notify you and let you know that it's out there for you. Thank you so much, Andres. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thanks. So we are back at the eAssist Dental Solutions podcast at Summit 2018. And I just got really excited now. I mean, I've been excited all morning by all of the uh, presentations and the speakers and everything that has been presented here. But I have 
a very special guest. Dr. Charles Blair of Coding with Confidence is here with me. Not, he's not on the line. He's not on Skype. He's right next to me. Dr. Blair, how are you today? I am fine. And I'm so delighted to be here at the ESS Summit. And I got in about noon today and just uh, really, really enjoying it. The presentations got better and better. So you really didn't miss much. You did miss too much? Uh, mm-hmm. not too much. No, you, you, you missed some um, some of the team members that talked about um, how to gel together as a team doctor, how to be an entrepreneur, but still be part of an organization. Right. And, yeah. Almost like your own business. And I know that you exemplify entrepreneurship. Can you tell us a little bit about your history? Well, it's quite varied. Uh, You know, we go back, I I guess in my life, I've kind of climbed some major mountains about every 15 years or so, and just basically uh, got out of college and majored in math and initially there, and uh, uh, then went in the Navy for about five years and got turned on to dentistry, went to dental school, uh, practiced dentistry about uh, 10 years from 74 to about 83, 84, and then... uh, Got in with uh, John McGill and uh, McGill and Blair, uh, Blair and McGill, and uh, then about 2004 got into the coding. And uh, I looked at the ADA code book. I said, "Wait a minute, this is just a list of codes. There's no value there. I mean, as far as interpretation." So we brought out coding with confidence in. Uh, about 2004 and five. Well, in the office of Dr. Jane Quintana, we, we keep your book right and handy. As a matter of fact, we have a few copies because we have older copies too in the uh, what we call the insurance room, right? Mm-hmm. And then we have the latest version, uh, which I purchased last year at, at, right. the, at the summit. So uh, just kind of going back to uh, where we were last year, uh, what are you excited about with your coding books and your products? Well, uh, you know, I think one thing that is really exciting is that initially I thought everything was about coding. But what I found is, is that offices, uh, there's a really a deficit in the administrative area. And we're up to our fourth edition on our administrative book. And I find that just the management of insurance, and if you're in PPOs, there's all these write-offs and one thing and another, there's a lot to know. And then uh, two years ago, when the ICD-10 came out, uh, we brought out our our medical dental cross-coding manual. Mm -hmm. So we have essentially three books at this point. And then our online code system is Practice Booster. And then, of course, we have Insurance Solutions Newsletter. And those uh, Practice Booster subscribers, they get the newsletter also. So that's, that's kind of our product line. That is great. A lot of doctors in the, across the whole country, who knows, maybe outside of the United States, might look to you as a mentor. But can you share with our audience who you recognize as one of your mentors? Well, I think uh, going back, uh, Harvey Sarner was uh, uh, someone who, uh, he was at the ADA initially, and then he got a, a tax and financial newsletter, this and that. And uh, so when I saw what he was doing, I said, you know, I think I'd like to do some of that in my life. Uh, I was not bored with dentistry. I got out of dentistry because I didn't like it. I think it's just climbing a new mountain uh, from time to time. I sold dental practices uh, for about 15 years in there, and I loved, you know, loved all of that uh, uh, phase in my life. So um, along the way... Um, and so I, I just like the, the changing tides, and I'm a perennial student, and um, uh, not bragging about my degrees, but I'm just a, a good student. And uh, I initially got a degree in, in math and then uh, accounting, business, dental surgery, you name it. And I've just really enjoyed the journey and love teaching. Um, and, and I teach uh, almost every week from September to May is my big speaking engagements and it's almost every week except for holidays. I'm glad you brought the teaching part because now we're going to get ready to teach here. Take me through an office that doesn't have one of your books. What do they do when they don't have the resources that you provide? Well, they, they certainly um, wing it. Um, we, we call it too, leaving money on the table. Um, uh, and in some cases could be uh, in some legal je- jeopardy for some of the, of the things that they do. 
and uh, some are not aware of their state law. And like, for instance, North Carolina, we can't give a gift to a patient for referrals. And that's true in New York, Texas, a number of states. Other states, it's wide open. And so, you know, we have out here as a, as a practicing dentist, you've got to have some basics, um, you know, basics of, of HIPAA and protecting your computer from hackers and, and just uh, uh, human resources. And, and then, of course, coding and insurance administration is a piece of that. Yes. Well, I appreciate so much you coming and saying hello to the booth here where we're podcasting at Summit in Salt Lake City, Utah. But if someone wanted to really get in touch with you on social media, let's say on Facebook, is your Facebook page uh, uh, have information about it? Yes, and I'll tell you, you know, I, I feel like I'm leading edge in some areas, but I'm kind of an old fart in others. <laughs> and so I have, at this point, uh, we're really getting into social media here for about the last, frankly, the last three or four months, getting more into social media. And so, uh, uh, and I would advise also all the dentists, uh, it's, a, it's a major thing. Well, the truth is that you're so well known in the community and so well respected, you really haven't needed it. So I, I think it's going to be a blessing for many people to see you come and, and offer that because I think it's, it's actually uh, it's some, it's a treat, I would consider it, yeah. uh, uh, you know, coming late in the game because I think your, your products are really, they, they're just catching fire. Yeah, we, we'd like to be really leading edge. We think we are and we've got some other things on the horizon that are pretty cool. So folks will be hearing about that. Okay, so when it does come, I, I, I would like a phone call or, <laughs> or, or a message so we can have a podcast yeah. on all of those news products. Okay, great. Thank you, doctor. Thank you. All okay. right. Great pleasure, job. Pleasure to be here at the uh, ESS Summit. Great job. Thank you. So now we're back again, and I got so lucky to get Belle Descharm with me. She has been one of the speakers of the afternoon session, and I have to tell you, I couldn't wait. I saw her on the agenda, and she rocked this house uh, here at Salt Lake City at the summit of 2018. Belle, how are you today? I'm doing great, Andre. I'm so happy to be here, and it's just been such a great experience. Everybody is just so full of energy, positivity. It's just a great place place to be and some wonderful people to be with, including you, of course. Oh, gosh. Thank you. And, you know, uh, you, you have a great lineup in this podcast episode. We had an uh, interview with um, Dr. Mark uh, Sivers. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, we had uh, uh, Dr. Blair was on the podcast oh, and, and a few Fantastic. ES sisters. Oh, and uh, he, uh, Dr. Mark brought a uh, professor from Harvard. Uh, his name is Jonathan. So he's on this show. This is going to be an amazing podcast when we put it all together. But I want to get down straight through to what you talked about, which, you know, Belle, you're a consultant. You focus on uh, making offices profitable. Yes. And you talked about the ever-important cash flow. Yes. What do you see out there with dentists that are great at what they do, but their officers, they're suffering? How do you fix that problem? And you've had some success. So do you have any stories? Oh, Andre, well, let's see. I have so many stories that uh, it's really hard to really pick one because my, they're all going through my head at the same time. If you were thinking about, um, say, great dentistry, and you're a great dentist, and you're a great clinician, and you think to yourself, I'm going to provide this product service to my patients, and they're just going to love me, and they're going to want to pay. So if you want a story, I'll tell a story. I had a dentist that told me that he didn't need anybody really at the desk because his patients would pay for the services. You don't have to, he said to me, you don't have to ask my patients to pay because they love my work so much that they're going to pay when they're here. And I said, well, well would you like to do an experiment? And he said, well, as long as it doesn't hurt my patients, of course. I said, oh, no, no, I'm not going to hurt your patients. But I would like to sit at the desk for one day, and when they come through, um, I'm not going to ask for a payment and see if they pay, just to see what, right. if your theory is correct. And he had a... A really great office manager and she pulled me aside and she said I ask every one of these patients for money 
And I said, I, I, I know. Let's just do the experiment. She said, okay, let's do it. And I sat there. I was really nice to the patients. Told them, I said, okay, today you've had... Uh, Two full gold crowns on 30 and 31. Your insurance estimate is uh, $450, and uh, your uh, share today is $1,200, just say to speak. And uh, and then I stopped talking. <laughs> then they'd say, there was a silence, and okay, all right. So uh, let's we'll see you next time. Let's make an appointment. We'll see you next time. And they walk out the door. So then some would come up, and i say, okay, you had your cleaning today. Uh, this one's not covered by insurance. I'd stop talking. Wait. And so they all left that day without paying a dime, not wow. one of them. I had one patient call back and say, you know, I'm confused. And I said, what's that? He said, well, they always ask me for a payment when I'm in, and you didn't ask me for a payment. And I said, oh, I'm really sorry about that. Yes, let me get your credit card over the phone right now. So case in point is a lot of doctors don't know what's going on at the desk. They don't know what their people are doing. And they they have a relationship with money that's not healthy. So that's why when I go in, that's the first thing I want to look at is the accounts receivable report. See how much money is owed, where it's aged, what adjustments are being done. There's a lot of things that that report will show immediately, and it's kind of the a, a like a medical diagnosis. It's it's one of the medical systems in a dental practice, and it's probably the most important is cash flow. Is there enough money to pay the bills coming in? And that has to be addressed immediately. You have to find out who's accountable immediately for that. And often the doctor has uh, a whole completely different idea about how the monies are being handled at the desk. And they don't know when the monies don't come in why, why that is. Absolutely. And, you know, you just brought a, a thought to, my, to mind. Um, I can combine your presentation uh, together uh, with Sandy's presentation because um, part of what makes an office successful what, you know, with payments could be the customer service level. The level of customer service to get it to a point where you, you still have to ask for the money. But in, in some cases with me, right. patients wanted to give me money, yes. and, you know, because my level of service, and, and I was going to share um, a story, I just didn't have the time to, to raise my hand with Sandy. Um, there's a patient in my office that every time she comes, she wants to hear Frank Sinatra music. <laughs> okay, she's a lovely patient, wants to hear Frank Sinatra. And I play the Frank Sinatra music. That's but what it takes, Andre. What That's makes what it, it takes. It, yeah. There's a double side to that. Another meaningful thing about that. What makes it really special, though, is that I remember that every time she's on the schedule, I need to be there and ready to play the Frank Sinatra music. <laughs> There's the expectation There's the ex there now, Andre. <laughs> and, and remember when Sandy was talking about the experience. Experience. Experience, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And the expectation and the experience. And so that, com you know, with your presentation, I said, wow, it would be amazing. I was having all these thoughts in my mind. It would be amazing to have Sandy and Belle put that presentation together. That would be awesome, wouldn't you it? Know? That would be so much fun. Yes. Yeah, there are... When I work with uh, dental offices and their staff, I find that there is there is this relationship with money, and it's. I've been in dentistry almost 50 years. I know that ages me, but I'm, I've earned every year. There has always been this relationship with money with dentists, and I'm not sure why they don't feel they should be paid for their services that they've earned, mm -hmm. or why they have to wait for the money, or why they have to give yeah. discounts. Um, there's a, it's deep rooted, but I know that they you can be taught things that will teach you how to communicate with patients, communicate value, and just like you said, will make people want to pay you because I've had that same experience. I know people would want to give me the check. I never because like, we want to pay Bell. Is Bell here? I want to give exactly. Bell the check. They, and they do that to you, exactly, right? Yes. See? Where's Bell? I love Bell. You know, and then they're ready. <laughs> Yeah. They have this big treatment plan, and they asked for you. They, they, they went out of their way. Maybe you were working in the back somewhere, and they pulled you from something exactly. You know that you were really you had dove into. 
And they're not going to disappoint you. That's right. You know? That's right. And so you have to cultivate that. You have to cultivate it. And there's there's some deep-rooted things because my mind is spinning right now because I've had clients that that were doing discounts even though after we did a fee analysis, we found their fees were in the 50th percentile, mm-hmm. which were really quite low. And on top of it, they were still doing discounts. And, and the fear, I think it's fear-based. It's a fear of fees. It's a fear of the communication of the value because, you know, they're not real sure that, that yeah. of, of who they are as a clinician. And it was like doing that, training them, and his biggest fear was losing patients, but we did a baby steps. Mm-hmm. We raised a couple things because he was in a bad way. Yeah. He couldn't pay his bills. Well, yeah. Belle... This is amazing. I mean, we could have taken this segment for this episode that you and I did, this little segment, and made it its own episode. But here's what we're going to do. We're going to have, you just gave me a thought, when we have our next podcast episode, we're going to talk about the relationship with money. Because the Ea sisters will also benefit from that. Yes, absolutely. And, and I'll put more, more of my thoughts and uh, research so I can give you some more, more some succinct information about that. Yes, because it's real. It's real. It's real. Thank you so much. You You're and I welcome. believe in all of the same yeah. philosophies, and I love it. <laughs> Me too. Thank you. All right. You're welcome, Andre. Thanks for top, stopping and saying hello. Have, a, have a great summit. You too. So we are back again at the ESS Dental Solutions Podcast, and I have a lot of favorite ES sisters, but one of my favorites really <laughs> is Corey and Fabro. How are you today? I'm doing so well. The, the summit has been so fun and right? so informative, and just seeing everyone. I've met so many new ES sisters. It's mm-hmm. been great. Wow. You know, um, yesterday we had a great, great meeting uh, with the, all the leaders in the, in the company, and you know, we, I'm just excited about not just the direction that it's going in, but the person who's uh, sailing that ship. Yes. Right? For us. <laughs> yes. And, uh, you know, where his heart is and his mind and his heart together uh, makes it what it is. So yes. can you talk a little bit about that? Yes. Um, it was so enlightening and um, exciting. It's something actually we've been kind of putting together for I want to say weeks, maybe months, um, and that Dr. Anderson has been leading, and it's been so inspirational, and it's um, what's coming for ESS and what we're currently pivoting on is just so heartwarming, and it's now for the ES sisters, and I really think that everyone's kind of work life and everything is just going to improve, and the culture is really changing, and it just kind of gives me chills and yesterday I almost cried when we were going over everything um, that we were going to be presenting um, today to everybody mm-hmm. and um, if you know me well I am not a crier <laughs> so that means a lot well that's why I wanted to steal a couple of minutes because uh, I saw your reaction I really did and it was like just so real mm-hmm. uh, and I was on the other side of you yeah. right and I'm um, like wow and uh, wow this is this is real this yeah. is real and you know I felt it in the room today the, the standing ovations yep. when this topic was being discussed yeah um, these people understand what money you know Bell and I were just discussing about the relationship with money yeah yeah and if we're gonna succeed you know, we all have to have a really fair chance yes. from all angles. Mm-hmm. And um, but anyway, um, we we do that because our offices succeed. Yes. If our if ESS wasn't doing a great job in those offices, we wouldn't be having these conversations, right? Yes, exactly. How, what can you say about that? Um, I just this journey always seems kind of so unreal Mm -hmm. um i when i started i my first paycheck my husband was like i don't i don't know if this is really is gonna work out and uh my first paycheck was 325 (laughs) dollars and i was like oh god um but you know as i kept working and as the company just keeps evolving Mm -hmm. and um everyone is you know you have to rethink and redo things. Um, things go out of, you know, it worked when it was the company was like this, but as it's growing, you kind of have to rethink. And I'm, I'm glad that everyone's minds were open 
are open um, mm-hmm. to changes that are happening. Um, and it's just actually really exciting that Dr. Anderson sees that, um, that we needed a change and um, are changing it for everyone. It's actually going to change everyone's lives, too. Yeah, and you know, just to shift it back to the to the doctors and the and the dental teams yep. in the offices, because it's all about them. I'm, yep. I mean, that's yeah, what, it is. I see the amount of offices that we bring on to e assist, mm-hmm. and it really confirms what people are saying about e assist out in this industry in the community. Yep. Uh, and that in itself is really exciting, by the way. Yes, it but, is. Yeah, because no one in in North Carolina that I knew was talking about ESS, but I was talking to a Henry Schein rep the other day and she was like, can you tell me more about that company? Because now I've got doctors asking me about ESS. Yeah, it yeah. really speaks volumes for the, the great job that everyone is doing out there for the doctors. And, um, you know, we're improving their lives. I actually have an office um, in Connecticut and um, their goal was to be a 100% collection on production um, and we actually did that last year for them on January 1st when the numbers came in and they actually won a, their a doctor gave them a trip um, to like the Caribbean oh I think gosh. they're over 100% they're at 101 oh my something goodness. and yeah. um, they gave us like a big thing like thanks to you our team is able to go out so that was really that's amazing. Yeah. To the EA sisters, right? To, to us, yeah. Oh, to the EA sisters team. Oh, they said, you know, thank story. you to, um, it was me and Brandy Smith, actually. Like, we are able to go on this trip because you wow. were able to help us with our collection. Wow. It, well, if you bring more stories like that, I'm going to start crying. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know it's almost dinner time. Yeah. <laughs> we got to go. I am going to, you know, reach out to you so that we can do a full episode. Okay. Just you and I. Sounds so good. So think about some topics that are hot right now in some of your offices okay. in your region, and we're going to share them. How's that? Perfect. Sounds Thank great. Thank you so much. Thank you. You know, it's always a pleasure. Yes, it is. <laughs> All right. We'll see you tomorrow. All right. Thanks. Enjoy the awards. Yes, I will. Thank you. So we are back again, and you're hearing the real sounds of the conference and the summit at Salt Lake City for eAssist Dental Solutions Podcast, and the, and the event as a whole has been amazing. We've had incredible speakers. There are our own e-assist team members. Uh, very rare that we bring from someone from outside. We do have a special surprise today from uh, from the outside, but, but with me right now have Judd, and he is gonna tell us what his goals are for the company for 2018 and beyond. Thank you, Andres. It's so great to be here on the podcast and here at Summit 2018 e-assist. Well, As we look out to the end of 2018 and beyond, 2019 and even further, we have some software needs that have grown over the years. As the company has grown, we have so many new reports, dashboards, um, features of the software that have to support new products that we offer. So much is going into the software. And our our original system that was built, that eAssist was built on to this day, the hub, what a fantastic software system, what it's done for us. But it, of course, it's now eight years old. It's written on some outdated technology. And so uh, my goals are, and we're already beginning, which is exciting. Mm-hmm. Uh, we should start to see some real results here soon, but I'll tell you about it here. We are looking to rebuild that software. And the trick is, this is a lot like refueling an aircraft in flight Mm -hmm. because we can't take down the current software system and mess with all the data behind in the databases, et cetera. We've got to leave that running and functional for the day-to-day operations of the business, serving all of those tremendous dentists in their offices. So we've got to come up with a syncing Uh, technology to sync data from the old system that has to be replaced to a new system then of course build on top of that new system it's going to be fantastic it's uh, one of the more difficult things to do in the technology Mm -hmm. software development world but we're going to pull it off and it's going to change e-assist for the better wow well first of all Thank you for coming by and, and just having saying hello here at the booth where we're podcasting from the summit, from the summit. Yeah. But, but the theme this weekend, uh, Judd, has been taking care of each other yes. as team members and 
that so that we can take better care of our clients, yes. our customers, right? Yes. And so I understand that that is the goal of your platform that yes. you're looking to launch because if we make it easier on us, then we can provide better care for our clients and customers as well. You're absolutely right. Wow. Absolutely right. I'd love to even just kind of comment back. Like that's, yeah. that's exactly the point. Our customers are on top. They're the most important people at eAssist. And next to that are all of the wonderful people that are doing the actual work of insurance billing, patient portion billing, um, all of the services that we provide. One of the major hurdles they have is the hub is so slow. Yes. Right? Just to call out that elephant in the room. It's so slow. And so our goal is to fix that for, just like you said, all of the people that serve our customers. And also our customers will now have some login capability on the new system. But yeah, it's all for them. And my favorite customer, well, they're all my favorite customers, but my wife, Dr. Jane Quintana. I can't wait to break the news. That's that wonderful. <laughs> wonderful. Yeah. Well, thank you, Judd. Thank I you very much. It's great to be here. All right. So you are hearing the real sounds of Summit 2018. This is great. I love doing a podcast in this kind of environment because you hear people talking and clapping and laughing. And uh, I, I love listening to podcasts in, in this kind of environment. Um, and now we have a special guest. Oh, my gosh. I was so pleased to grab him from the crowd. And he is Luke. Anderson, and he works with the IT department of eAssist Dental Solutions. Luke, thank you so much for coming by. Yeah, not a problem. Thanks for having me. Great. Tell the eAssist Nation and beyond, because I know we have now a lot of listeners that are joining us day by day. Can you tell them a little bit about yourself and what is your position with the company? All right. So, um, like I said, I'm Luke Anderson. I'm um, just started the company. I started working for the company about a month ago, I want to say. Yeah, about a month ago. And I'm loving every minute of it. I work for IT, so I help with the connections and everything and um, getting the AMs and AEs connected to their offices, what they need to do, and just solving any problems. And um, it's just great. I love it. I love it. You know, you said something key, uh, solving problems. You know, your dad... Dr. Anderson. Yep, that's he, him. <laughs> he loves <laughs> he loves to solve problems. Yeah. And you know, I came to him. Um, you know, he he had a Q and A just a few minutes ago because he likes to hear what his people uh, have. You know, feel as a concern, mm -hmm. so he can improve everything for everybody. And I came with the problem. I said, you know. He just doesn't have a podcast. Would you like? And one of my favorite phrases that he has, and you tell me if I'm right. Yeah. He'll tell you, run with it. Yeah, exactly. Is that, is that Dr. Anderson? That is totally <laughs> him. That is so great. And when he said that to me, I felt like, wow, I'm not even an employee. I feel honored. You know, mm -hmm. we were clients. My wife's office is... Um, office of Dr. Jane Quintana in Wake Forest, North Carolina. Okay. See, that's how I came to eAssist. Um, I'm so, just so thrilled to be here, to see the changes. And then your IT department is growing, right? Oh, yeah, it's growing. Um, how many people now uh, do you have? Well, um, to be honest, I'm not quite sure. Uh, I think we've got a little bit over... Um, I think we have about 12 or 15 people. It's kind of small still, but we've got wow. yeah, we've got quite a few people going on. Uh, Angel's doing great, just uh, keeping it all held together. And every day we're, she, she wants to find more people to come join the IT team. It's been doing great. This is truly amazing. And then, you know, uh, IT and the reason for growing the IT department is because it has been the theme of all weekend long. Mm -hmm. And it's making things better for our team members, but also the doctors that we serve. And the word serve and serving was really thrown around out there today. Oh yeah, this whole weekend. Definitely. Uh, tell me about that and how you feel. Well, um, well, it's true what's been said this whole weekend. It's the key to leadership, the key to any success is to um, not focus on yourself. And that's wow. what, that was something that was thrown around here. It's not about you. Um, referring to, you know, the kind of a top-down leadership, we're scrapping that now. And now it's all about us and the customer. And that's the biggest thing. And 
we're seeing that this new style of leadership has been it is definitely needed as the company grows and like you said before about the expanding IT department serving other people um, we just need to keep, we're expanding so fast and we, because we really like to serve other people and um, because of that service the, co- the clients feel that and they really appreciate us as a company because they feel like they're the ones that we care about the most and it's true we care about them and that's what I feel is kind of the secret to success that's been going on at ESS so far excellent and you know just one final comment to that is I felt it because we're a client I mm-hmm. told you I felt and being here and for the clients that are not here that are listening to our podcast I'm a client I was here and I felt what ESIS wants to do for our office back home. And then as a, as a team member, too, because I'm, I'm, I'm on both sides mm-hmm. of the equation here, mm-hmm. I felt like, wow, the owner of the company and everybody in leadership really cares about me. So that's the message I took. Thank you so much for coming by. Yeah, and not saying a problem. Hello. Not a problem. All right. Thank you, Luke. I Bye-bye. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. So we are back again at the eAssist Dental Solutions podcast. I keep saying it over and over. Listen to the sounds. Listen to the sound mm. of the people and the laughter and the, you know, every time we go to break, it's just like watching people love each other. I, I, you almost have to be here in Salt Lake City. But next to me, I was mm. fortunate to get one of my mentors and the leader of the ambassador program at ESS Dental Solutions. Marcy, how are you today? Oh my gosh, Andres. Well, I'm really happy and I'm really sad because today's the last day of summer. Um, (laughs) Yes, I know, I know. And what a, you know, I heard over and over this weekend that this was the best summer, summit. Yeah, and I've been to only two of them, of course. What was so great about this, this weekend? You know, I think we started off the weekend, Thursday night, with the ambassador's happy hour and dinner, and yes. that put you know great connections in place, and yeah. everybody had a chance to put faces with names that they've been seeing on Slack and stuff like that. So um, we took advantage of that opportunity to get together and, and just promote community and develop relationships within our own ESS, you know, family. So that was awesome. That Thanks was awesome. <laughs> what is... The real goal of the ambassadors? The real goal is to develop and enhance the personal connections that we have with our, uh, with our offices and our clients so that they know that we're real people and that we care. Yes. You know, we're blessed to have technology and mm-hmm. to live in the virtual world so that we can all work from our homes and be across the country and be with our families. Um, but we miss that personal contact in those relationships that you get from, you know, giving somebody a pat on the back or a smile or a hug. Um, and that's what, you, what we're wanting to do with the ambassadors. And then also here at Summit mm-hmm. to get a chance to give everybody a hug and, and fill up our buckets with all that love, ESS love. You know? Yes. <laughs> and, you know, the timing for you to launch this program couldn't be better because all weekend long we heard the words serving. Mm-hmm. Loving one of the loving our clients, customers. That was really the theme Mm -hmm. that I took. Yeah. You know, creating from the the lowest position position in the company Mm -hmm. does not mean it's low anymore. Nope. Right? Mm -hmm. We're turning it upside down. We're turning it upside down. Wow, what a great that could be a great hashtag for ESS. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about, about that. You know, it's so important to uh, to give everybody a voice and to be heard. And and for me, it promotes connection. And that's that's what's made this summit so different than ones in the, than the others that I've been to. Um, Dr. Anderson really just expressed vulnerability. You know, he was available and open and, and spoke from his heart. And and just, I felt like we were. He was talking to each one of us individually, and we had that connection with him and and can share the the vision and the expansion that that we're all excited for and I always see that out of him but this weekend he really took it to another level he did he did he was it was deeply personal 
and you know connections are so important to me I study relationships you know and that's the biggest key is to ha- show that vulnerability and who you are and and admit when you've made a mistake and how many times has he said this weekend oh you know I failed you or <laughs> um, and and it's brought him to tears you know to see us all changing and growing so it's awesome wow well, thank you so much for stopping by here. I have, you know, my little booth set up for the podcast here at Summit. It's great. And um, I've had so many incredible guests and interviews. But I have to say, Marcy, I look up to you. Um, you know, whenever you send the message on Slack or whenever I get one of your emails, I get really excited. So thank you so much again. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, there's, there's nothing else better than personal connection, right? That's right. Yeah. Well, Ia Sisters out there, you got to share this podcast with all of your connections out there mm-hmm. as we speak about connections. And we got to get Ia Sist more on the map. So we are back again, Summit 2018 in Salt Lake City, Utah at eAssist Dental Solutions. And now I have a very special guest. He is Dr. Anderson. He's here with me. He came by to say hello. <laughs> and I can't wait to ask him some really important questions about this weekend. I'm exhausted. Huh? <laughs> but I loved it. <laughs> it was so much fun. Dr. A, you know, what I heard this weekend was serving, loving each other. It was all weekend long. Why is that so important to you? That's a great question. I, I, I was thinking about this too yesterday after we were done talking about servant leadership. And there are many books written on the topic. We started studying it back at HBS about Toyota and how they built such a wonderful company by teaching rice farmers how to build the world's best quality cars. And a big component of that is servant leadership. It's taught in most world religions. It's not a new concept but it's ignored by many companies. They take the authoritarian, I'm the boss, do what I say, you're beneath me approach to leadership. And it's ineffective. It is all the time it's tried. I mean, think about parents who try to lead their kids that way every day. What happens when the parents 18 and the kids 18? They pack their bags and leave in the middle of the night and they never say a word to the, to the authoritarian parent who led that way. Wow. I mean, if they don't believe, right? That's right. If they don't feel the like you really care about them and you're there to serve them and help them, in the end, you have no influence at all. Mm-hmm. And, and of course, in the book of Kings, there's a story of leadership. This is the, the catalyst. So I was reading the, I was reading the um, Toyota Way and how they focus on servant leadership. And so I started reading. Uh, there were some articles written in the 70s uh, by Greenleaf was his last name about servant leadership. It's a, you can buy it on Kindle. I think it's like an hour long read. It's a very simple pamphlet, but it started this whole movement of servant leadership. And so I was reading in the Bible, I was reading in the book of Kings about King Solomon's son who after King Solomon died was told by his people, Hey, your dad made it real tough for us. Like really hard, too many taxes, Life is tough. Are you going to make it? Can you make it easier, please? And he gathered all of this. This is First Kings chapter 7, I think, verse 12, maybe 12 verse 7. I can't remember. But he gathered all the wise elders together. He said, give me three days to think about it. And the wise elders said, if you will serve these people, inspire them, teach them, serve them, they will be your servants forever. Wow. Like flip it upside down. Like you're beneath them. Right. And, and in the New Testament, Jesus Christ said the same thing, that he who is the greatest among you will be your servant. The same lessons are taught in Hinduism and Buddhism. Gandhi taught the same principle. Martin Luther King taught the same principle. So there's evidences out there for the last 5,000 years that this is the way you lead any organization. And so I have been attracted to this now, and it just feels right to me. It's, it's, it's proven by uh, years of history. And, and I remember I had the feeling, Andre, after I was finished talking about servant leadership yesterday, I felt like I was 17 years old again. Interesting. Let me explain that. I, uh, when I was a kid, 
I, 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 tr- I ran for sixth grade student body office. I failed. I ran for seventh grade. I failed. I was this like fat kid that was focused on myself. Right. I ran for eighth grade. I didn't get it. I didn't run for ninth grade. No, I ran for ninth grade. I didn't get it. <laughs> well, I, probably because I didn't get it because I was focused on myself. Right. It's not about you. And finally, when I was a 12th grader, I had a friend named David Barlow. He was a student body president at Vimont High School. He doesn't know the story, but we were at Boys State together, and I ran for something, and I failed. And he took me, he had enough compassion. He was an 18-year-old kid, and I'm 17. I'm a junior. He's a senior. And we went up into his uh, little you know, place where he was staying there on the, the university campus, and he talked to me for about three hours about servant leadership. I didn't realize that's what he meant, but I do now. It was about thinking of other people, caring about other people, but not just saying it, but like really believing it in your heart and mind, like mm-hmm. deep, deep down, because that changes your mindset. Well, I'm going to give you something to think about. So I'm here in, in, as, as a team member. Uh, you're, you're a team member. Right. But I'm sitting in the crowd, and for ESS Nation and our audience out there that's already catching on to the podcast, I'll tell you, it's really getting out there. We're, I'm a client as well. My wife's Dr. Jane Quintana's office is a client. So I'm sitting and listening to this, observing, and I actually felt loved from a client's perspective. I couldn't believe what I was feeling. I said, if any of the other dentists that you serve with ESS could hear this, could be here today, not to hear me say it, but to feel it, it's another story. Another story. What I, do you think about that? That's a great question, and I, and I hope that dentists will hear this podcast. I think a great example of servant leadership in successful companies is found in Nordstrom's. Uh, there, if you look at their hierarchy model, the CEO isn't on top, and the managers aren't below that, and the, the, the salespeople aren't below them. And the customer at the very bottom, it's the other way around. The customer is at the very top. That is the e-assist way now. The customer is at the top, and right below the customers are the account managers and account executives that service the customer. And below them are their Kaizen coaches that service them. And below them, the C-level team, us. I'm here to serve all. And by, by flipping it upside down, it answers your question. Now the customer is the one that we're focused on. We've said it before, in the back of our minds we thought it, but when your model's upside down, who are you trying to please? Right. Your boss. Right. And the boss's boss. And the boss's boss. Who cares about those guys? The customer is the only one we should please. And the boss, the boss is, if they're a boss at all, all their goal is, all their job is to remove what is stuck between the person that's servicing the customer to give them tools and inspiration and insight so that they can do a better job in the most important person. And that is the customer. He who is the servant is the greatest of all. Right? Dr. Anderson, I just want to thank you, but I have one more question for you because I know you got busy. Oh, yeah. And I know that you have a lot of people to see. Did you feel love this weekend? Absolutely. It, it, it was magical. Mm-hmm. Not just emotional, but magical. Like These are truths that are being expressed here uh, in this community. Mm-hmm. And I'm so grateful for all the ES sisters that make us great and help the clients, like your sweet wife, <laughs> make their lives great. Great. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks, Andre. Have a good week. You too. Take care. Bye. So we are back and better than ever because I have a surprise for you. We saved the best for last because I have with me the winner of the ES Sister of the Year, Michelle Pennington. And by the way, she is also my partner on our sales team. And Michelle has been my mentor for the last three months. And, you know, I just want to say, Michelle, First, thank you for your stopping by and saying a couple, you know, hi for a couple of minutes. Of course. I know you're really busy and everybody wants to say hello to you. But what you have taught me is so valuable to not only me, but e-assist and what Dr. Anderson wants to achieve. So you represent e-assist really, really in an excellent way. So now... Let's talk a little bit about your award and what that meant to you last night. 
other stuff. I was speechless, which never happens. And I, in thinking of it overnight, I was, um, I feel so honored and I'm so grateful. I am grateful. I've always been grateful for the opportunity, but to be recognized that way was just an incredible honor. I just can't even tell you how much it means to me. And, you know, it might have been nice to have a little notice so I could make an acceptance speech instead of just crying the whole time. <laughs> but it was, it's so, again, I just can't even describe what it means to me to know how much everybody loves me and that what I do really makes a difference in the lives of all the ES sisters that, that I work for. And you know, Michelle, I was sitting in the back, all the way in the back of the room, and I felt something that you said just now, which is you wish you had had a little bit of notice, but I just think that was part of the ESS way. I think more people knew, but they had to. <laughs> they had to keep it a secret. Uh, what an incredible, an incredible thing. It I was. felt it. Thank you. I felt the emotion. And you know, it's real. And congratulations Thank to you. all of the winners, too. Amen. Right? Yes, of absolutely. all the awards. Yeah. Um, so, well, Michelle, you know, I can't wait to get back home to implement more of the things that you have taught and, and really put it into play. Because last night, you made me realize all of what you do every day and how it all comes together. Thank you. Thank you so much. Look at that. Thank we said you. it at the same time. We're always gelling, guys. <laughs> We're always in sync. It's true. It's, it's true. true. We're just two peas in a pod. That's right. Michelle, thank you. Thank you. Have a great flight home. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. You know your practice is losing money. You just don't know why. Office managers are often overwhelmed with juggling insurances, patients, scheduling, and staff. eAssist Dental Solutions has the answer. By outsourcing your dental billing efforts with eAssist, your patients become your sole focus. With eAssist on your side, you will feel the burden of insurance collections lifted off your shoulders. Visit us at www.dentalbilling.com today to find out more information.